that was a lot of abstract theoretical math with a lot of symbols and, and general ideas floating around. Let's put this knowledge into practice by determining the pH of a given weak acid solution. So in this problem, we have a 0.534 molar solution of formic acid. Let's just call formic acid HA to simplify our lives. It's a generic weak acid. And we've got the given Ka value there for formic acid of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4. First things first, we're going to lay down that ice table with the chemical equation for acid ionization at the top. So here it is. HA reacts with water to form A- and H3O plus reversibly. H2O we can completely ignore in the ice table because it's a pure liquid. And I've gone ahead at the bottom and included the equilibrium equation for this reaction. Ka is equal to H3O plus molarity times A- minus molarity divided by HA molarity. You're probably sick of hearing me say that at this point. Now, let's think through the initial conditions. Well, the 0.534 molar solution of formic acid tells us the, that the initial concentration of formic acid is 0.534 molar. We haven't sort of turned on reaction of the formic acid with water yet, and so all of the HA molecules you can imagine are intact. That means we have zero A- minus in the solution initially, and we're going to assume zero initial hydronium. Notice, this is about 10 to the negative 1, the initial concentration of HA. That's much, much larger than 10 to the negative 7. And we, so we can assume that the initial hydronium concentration is essentially 0. Meaning, this reaction is guaranteed to go forward. So think just for a moment about Q versus K. The initial Q here is equal to 0, so the reaction will certainly go forward. This allows us to write the change line of the ice table with a minus x on the reactant side and plus x's on the product side. And then for the equilibrium line, we simply put the initial and change together like so. Now, with the Ka value being quite small, 10 to the negative 4, relative to the initial concentration of acid at about 10 to the negative 1, we can make the x is small assumption or approximation here, meaning the equilibrium concentration of HA is going to be pretty darn close to 0.534. So let's just call it 0.534 to simplify the math. So now we have expressions for each of the molarities at equilibrium, and we can plug those into the equilibrium equation to arrive at x squared divided by 0.534 is equal to Ka, that given Ka value of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4. We plug and chug, we do the math, we solve for x, 9.8 times 10 to the negative 3 is the value of x, and this is the equilibrium molarity of H3O+. And to find the pH, we take the negative base 10 logarithm of that value and arrive at 2.01 for the equilibrium pH. Does this make sense? Well, yes, it does. Right? Formic acid is a weak acid. We can tell that by its pKa. So the pH should be less than 7, but should not correspond to the negative base 10 logarithm, for example, 0.534, which is going to be a less positive number than 2.01. That would correspond to a strong acid, right? So this is looking good. We've got a pH less than 7 right there in the weak acid range, given this concentration in Ka. Now let's look at the pH of a weak base solution of a given initial or total concentration. So in this problem, we have a 0.25 molar solution of trimethylamine. This is a weak base. That's all you need to know about it. Let's call it B for a generic weak base. And we're given the Kb value at 6.3 times 10 to the negative 5. So we want to know the concentration of hydroxide at equilibrium, the pOH at equilibrium, and the pH. And this will be a nice kind of stepwise route from the end of the ice table calculation through to the pH. So to begin, we write that chemical equation for base ionization. There it is, reaction of the base with water. And we can go ahead and fill in our initial conditions. 0.25 moles per liter of trimethylamine, the, the base, and zero of the conjugate acid, and zero hydroxide. Zero initial hydroxide because 0.25 is much, much larger than 10 to the negative 7. Thinking about Q versus K, the reaction will run forward, so we'll lose reactant and gain products, minus X, plus X, and plus X, and we generate the equilibrium line by adding the initial and change lines together. Voila, there we go. Now, before we plug into the equilibrium equation at the bottom here, 
we can note that 0.25 minus x is likely to be very, very close to 0.25, and so we can assume that the two are equal. And this allows us to plug in 0.25 in the denominator of the right-hand side of the equilibrium equation. So we arrive at kb is equal to x squared divided by 0 0.25, and we can plug and chug and solve for x, and we arrive at x is 4.0 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per liter. Now let's pause for a second and note that in this weak base situation, because the base generates hydroxide, the x value is the molarity of hydroxide at equilibrium. And so we can find the pOH of this solution by taking the negative base 10 logarithm of that concentration, and this comes out to 2.4. This is not the pH, and in fact, if this were the pH, that would be problematic because that would imply a pH less than 7 in a basic solution. Doesn't make sense conceptually, right? To find the pH, we apply the idea that pH plus pOH is equal to 14, and so the pH is 14 minus the pOH, 14 minus 2.4, which comes out to 11.6, and indeed, this pH makes sense for basic solution being greater than 7, but not so great that the acid, that the base is strong. This corresponds to a weak base pH given that concentration of 0.25 moles per liter.